Hi everyone, Tahara Esradi here from Applied Intuition and today I'm here with Corrine Sevar Corey and she's a counseling astrologer and um, she's going to talk about the upcoming eclipses and how they're a healing portal. So Corrine, welcome and tell us, what's, tell us what's coming up in the next month with these eclipses. Yes, so thank you for having me Tahara and I look forward to having this little chat with you. Um, so we've we are we have entered eclipse season. Eclipse season spans uh, for about six uh, weeks, and um, the first eclipse is going to be a lunar eclipse followed by a solar eclipse. But the eclipse season started with the the first uh, the new moon uh, preceding the full moon. So that's why today, uh, September 9th, uh, we just had the new moon uh, at the beginning of last week, and we entered that six-week period where we are feeling the energy of the eclipses, and it's like a heightened sense of energy. Um, mm. The eclipses themselves are considered a portal um, for events to manifest. If they were meant to manifest, that's a time when they tend to concretize and realize themselves you know there is more speed perhaps when eclipse season comes in um and it's the two weeks prior to the first eclipse the two weeks in between the two eclipses which those two weeks will be yet the most intense but i think the week leading up to the first eclipse is very intense as well and then the last two weeks after the second eclipse um will be constituting <clears throat> the overall eclipse period eclipse portal so um we begin uh this fall 2024 with the first eclipse being a full moon sun opposite moon eclipse and it's going to be at 26 pisces it's going to be sep september 17th okay. and so the, the week the two weeks really but the week leading up to september 17th most of us are going to feel most more and more and more, you know, it depends where we're at. Excitement, if we're onto new projects and we're mm -hmm. anticipation, if we're just looking forward to something uh, or angst, anxiety, fear, if we're, you know, um, anticipating something in that might, might be challenging. Um, but the energy is amped up. It's almost like for the whole entire six weeks, but especially the week leading to the first eclipse, the two weeks in between, and then the week after the second one, you know, it's like a full moon every day type of feeling. I've been feeling that. <laughs> it's and, been feeling that way. And so the eclipses in general are doorways, you know, mm -hmm. and they travel in families of three, meaning they happen every six months and they travel in family of three in terms of themes that are brought up in our respective lives. And now, so why is that? Why would they travel in families of threes? Because of the signs that, they're, that they locate themselves in. So for example, this lunar eclipse is going to be at 26 Pisces in the mm -hmm. sign of Pisces. The solar eclipse of October 2nd will be at 10 degrees of Libra in the sign of Libra. And last March, April, we had a couple of eclipses. March 25th was a lun the lunar eclipse at five Libra. And the solar eclipse, April 8th, was at 19 Aries. Um, but the Libra theme is ending with this eclipse. And going back one more six months prior to this spring, uh, spring 2024. Um, so we would have had um, in the fall of 2023, we had the uh, solar eclipse at uh, October 14th at 21 Libra in Libra. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lunar eclipse uh, October 28th was in Taurus at five degrees of Taurus. And that was completing some previous thematics okay, but so the libra the libra which is all relationship related and it's me you how can we create equal 
you know, uh, dynamics between people. Um, Libra is ruled by Venus, the planet of that. Uh, Venus rules so many things, but you know, it's beauty, it's, it's aesthetics, it's what's what's pristine, what's um, like clean and but just um, elegant, you know. Um, but Libra is an air sign, so it's a sign. It's it it's it's a social sign. It's about um, meeting people, making friends, um, uh, um, getting into relationships, love relationships. Um, Venus rules love, romance. It rules all the arts, everything that's very refined and beautiful, and that elevates. Um, and but it also rules. Um, the domains of value and worth. So mm. those themes have been very pre prevalent, prevalent uh, last fall, last spring, and this fall to do with the Libra, the Venus. So it's it's worth. What what are my values, my societal mm. values, but also my my resources, my my real material values, um, and. It's my worth, like as a human being, as a spiritual being, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Venus is also about empowerment and the rising of the feminine energy for more, more grace, more peace, more ease, more flow to come to Mother Earth. And this particular fall is very, these two eclipses, um, are very, I mean, the, the solar eclipse of October 2nd, which is at Libra, at 10 degrees of Libra, will be finishing up, you know, the story that began, uh, you know, six months and six months, uh, mm -hmm. 18 months ago, um, and conclude, but hopefully on an upbeat, right? So it will be about succeeding to bring out more empowerment and more manifestation on the concrete level of deep wishes and desires. Um, mm. And so the, the lunar eclipse that's preceding this solar eclipse in Libra, September 17th is in Pisces, which is ruled by um, Neptune. And those two uh, archetypes, the sign and the planet, uh, again, it's about um, beauty and aesthetics and what uplifts us. Uh, Neptune Pisces is a very spiritual sign. And it's about um, promoting the arts, promoting everything that's beautiful. Uh, Neptune Pisces rule the water and the seas and the oceans and the rivers. So, you know, we could have themes to do around all that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Neptune is also dreams and hopes. Um, and it's everything mystical, everything spiritual, all the practical uh, practices that people put in, in play to in, enhance their spirituality and their sense of wholeness because Neptune Pisces is one, unity and uh, wholeness. And uh, so, for example, uh, meditation, yoga, um, somatic release exercises, um, you know, any uh, walks in Mother Nature, um, communion with Mother Nature in any way uh, is Neptunian, Piscean uh, in, in nature. And um, but Pisces is also illusions and addictions and codependency and victimhood and mm. i think that this particular eclipse is a very it's going to be a powerful one because the moon is going to be very close to the earth which is why they call it the super moon so right i've heard that super moon lunar eclipse mm -hmm. and um you know as we said earlier to explain physically um my head would be the earth and this is the moon and this is the sun and the lunar eclipse is sun opposite moon. And the, the moon gets eclipsed by the earth, which comes across between the sun and the moon and eclipses the moon, right? So right. 
depending on, on, on how aligned perfectly uh, these three bodies are, you'll have partial, full, annular, you know, full. Right. So the, the earth is actually blocking the light of the sun from reaching the moon in a lunar. That's eclipse. right. Yeah. Okay. That's and, right. Uh, so if, if the alignment is perfect, those eclipses will be total. Right. So for example, um, we had, well, that was a sun, solar eclipse, sun conjunct moon, but that was a total eclipse we had April 8th of 2024. Yeah. This particular one is not total. Um, but the next uh, lunar eclipse of March 14th, 2025, that will be at 24 degrees of Virgo, that one will be a total. And then we'll have another lunar eclipse, September 7th, 2025, at 15 Pisces. That'll be a total eclipse. Um, but so they don't necessarily have to be total to be to be powerful. And this one, because it's going to be so close to the earth, is going to be felt by us mm -hmm. uh, as, it, as if it were total. You know, it'll feel very... Powerful. And does it matter? Does it... I know that when there was a total eclipse, people were tracking what parts the earth were. So um, is it true that that those parts w would be affected more, the, the pathway? Yes. Yeah, so the, wherever... And then yeah, yeah wherever then, around the globe, wherever around right. the globe, these eclipses uh, would be more, the path of the eclipse would be right. uh, more complete, uh, conjoining with uh, yeah. lo the locality. Um, so, for example, Neptune is, you know, one of the negative manifestations of too much Pisces. Neptune would be too much water, right? So, flooding, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, wherever the, the path, um will be exact you know crossing the planet um there might be more flooding but if it's winter time mm -hmm. there might be more snowing i mean right know, okay um, okay and if it's a place where there isn't much water maybe for them it'll be blessings to have some rain right not necessarily right. negative yeah right okay did you want to show us the chart or just move on like is there Right. So yes, let's do that. Um, so we could uh, share the chart right here. So now can you see it? Yes. Okay. So, um, so this here, the sun at the bottom is at 25 Virgo and it's across the moon at 25 Pisces. So that is the, so the, the lunar eclipse, the sun opposite moon. It happens to be conjunct Neptune, so moon in Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune, and Neptune is at the very end of its sign in Pisces, conjunct the moon. So this is a double, a triple, you know, more added layers of Piscean and Neptunian energy. And so, for example, at the societal level, but at the private level, personal level, it might be very, very, uh, in, in a good idea um, to be very mindful of the themes of victimhood and, um, you know, like playing out those patterns that humanity as a whole has played out for a long, long time. And it's about time that humanity as a whole include and us at the personal level, each and every one of us, we've got to do the work in order to then elevate the vibration at the societal level, uh, we have to increase our compassion, our um, uh, you know, gratitude, um, forgiveness. Um, we've got to increase our um, being very aware of when we fall into patterns of becoming of dependency, you know, and um, I think society as a whole has been addicted to victimhood it's always somebody else's fault you know mm -hmm. and personally but also in in terms of structures you know with pluto having increased its hold uh since 20 28 08 2008 pluto has been in capricorn and it's been in capricorn until November 19, 
19th, it'll leave Capricorn forever. And it, Pluto is a very slow moving planet that uh, goes around in 248 years. And so in our lifetime, this transit of Pluto in Capricorn from 2008 to, 2000 to 2024, um, it's the last time in our lifetime that we will experience Pluto in Capricorn. We're going to continue to experience Pluto in our chart in the next sign, which is Aquarius. Pluto dipped into Aquarius um, late January, 2024, and then just came back into Capricorn at the beginning of September and will stay with us at the last degree of the of the sign of Capricorn, which is a very crisis, it's a crisis degree. It's a very critical degree, and it'll pretty much be stationed there for three months until November nineteenth, when it finally moves into Aquarius for the next twenty years. It'll be in a, the next sign of Aquarius, which is air, and uh, you know a much different. Um, flavor than uh, Capricorn, which is the planet that is ruled by Saturn. I mean, the, the sign of Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and, and Saturn rules big institutions and big structures and systems. And, um, and so with Pluto, which is all about control, there's been consolidation of control at the top. And with Pluto moving into Aquarius, over the next 20 years, we are finally going to start dismantling the excesses that are no longer serving society as a whole and us personally. Um, but so on, at a private, a personal level, this uh, Pluto, it, at the last sign of, at, at the last degree of Capricorn, during the eclipse period, is just going to multiply the effects of the eclipses, already eclipses alone without other, you know, cosmic bodies um, making everything feel heavier and 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 uh, it it's it's just an intense time, but it's actually could be intense good because it's really for the purpose of healing. And there, there are, um, there's the picture here where you see Pluto in Capricorn is sextiling Neptune in, at, in the last degrees of, of the sign of Pisces and sextiling again, the last degree of um, Uranus at the last degrees, in the last degrees of Taurus, making a mini grand trine over here and then making a grand trine with the sun, which is opposite the moon, that's the lunar eclipse. So making a grand trine with the lunar eclipse. So we're having a kite formation, which is really, really a beautiful um, setup for increasing flow, you know, increasing harmony. Um, it, it's a very helpful uh, combination of a, a very helpful picture to, to maybe tamper down the, um, the excesses and the intensity of the aggravation that perhaps the eclipses and the Pluto, you know, in the last degree of Capricorn could bring uh, per to personally and in the society. Yeah. Okay, so this that's the lunar eclipse. So I, I heard that we could expect there's some flow that can help with some of the tension of the eclipse and also with this issue of Pluto going back into Capricorn for a couple because, of months. Because the symbolism of, of Pluto, which rules the sign of Scorpio, is all about uh, death and rebirth. Mm -hmm. Symbolic death and rebirth is, is, is uh, destru destruction for reconstruction. But the destruction is very progressive. It's very slow with Pluto. And then we are really in the last bit of, of needing to come to awareness that we have to let go of what we've been holding on to that no longer serves our highest good, you know, our well-being. And if there are 
issues that we have, interpersonal issues or issues with our families or issues mm -hmm. with our work or with our health or at any in any domain of life, um, now is the chance to really wake up, to realize, to do the work basically of release, detoxifying, so seems, cleansing, yeah. clearing. Um, this uh, lunar eclipse is in Virgo, Pisces. Those are the signs that rule physical health, mental health, spiritual health, emotional health. And it's really a time where it's very appropriate right now to just embark on some detoxification journey, you know, um, of physically, but mm -hmm. also of our emotions, letting go of anger, letting go. Of, it's, it's a huge time for forgiveness and compassion and empathy. It's, it's really a huge time for reaching across the aisle and putting ourselves in the shoes of the other, which Libra can do very well. And the, the solar eclipse in Libra is, you know, uh, October 2nd. Uh, um, seeing the point of view from, from the other person's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just reaching out to others, realizing that we are all one. We are, we are unity. We're one humanity. And we are one spiritual. We are all spiritual beings, you know, living a physical journey. But we are first and foremost, spiritual beings. And this particular lunar eclipse is going to really bring that awareness to the forefront. More and more people are going to awaken to the fact that it can be different. It doesn't have to be about combat, combative, combativeness and fighting. And <clears throat> it doesn't have to be about, you know, in order for me to win, you have to lose. You know, we can all win. Uh, if we work together and, um, you know, Mother Earth has been evolving herself as a planet. She has her own identity and her energy has been, you know, in increasing, um, has been elevating. And if we are not cleaning our thoughts uh, parallel to, you know, the... The growth, you know, the the consciousness growth of humanity, mm -hmm. um, then we're going to be left behind. Um, we need to be more mindful about our thoughts, and uh, we need to be uh, bringing in more gratitude when we feel um, negative emotions. Um, we just need to keep on working on ourselves and catching our thoughts. Be mindful. Be be present. Um, and, and realize that our thoughts create our, our life, our future. And so, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so, that's the so uh, of that. Yes. Yeah. So it seems like, um, there's, it's going to be kind of intense and things kind of need to happen that are dated to happen, but that we also have a lot of help because there's this yes. flow. We, so we are going to have help in yeah. facing our grief, loss, shedding our skin. We are in the chrysalis as humanity and individually, all of us. We are all experiencing at some level or another in our respective lives, some form of death and rebirth. And we are in the chrysalis and we will become butterflies, but that will be probably beyond the end of this year. Okay. Let's talk about the solar eclipse that's coming up. October right, so 2nd. the solar eclipse will be in Libra. And we spoke about Libra earlier with Venus ruling Libra. You uh, want to show us the chart while you're explaining it? it? So I can, um, I will switch to the solar eclipse right here and then share. There we go. There, there is the solar eclipse. And so here we see um, the sun and the moon together at the top of the chart here because it's in Washington, D.C. Um, and at 10 degrees of Libra. Okay. And here we have also a beautiful grand trine in water signs. So that's, again, very feminine, very flowing. And uh, it really is about bringing the feminine energy to the forefront, you know, make it part of the conversation and it's for the empowerment of women in general uh 
privately and personally and at the societal level. It more, more the healing energy is feminine energy. And it's, it's, it's just really, there's gonna be a lot of flow um, accompanying this solar eclipse, which is about new beginnings because it's sun conjunct moon, new birth. It's like a new moon, right? It's the beginning of, um, of the cycle. And so, um, so the full moon, the lunar eclipse is going to bring release, is mm -hmm. going to bring fruition as well. Whatever we've, all the work and labor that we've put in since last series of eclipses, or even the series before that, you know, six months ago and six months before that, right. we are now seeing the fruition of our labor, of our hard work. Um, so it's the payback time. It's the promotion, you know, it's uh, being shone into the, pushed into the light. You know, it's it's being, uh, getting recognition, you know, full moon, we see it fully, right? But it's also, the, the lunar eclipse is also a lot about releasing and shedding and letting go so that we can start anew with the solar uh, eclipse, which is again, new moon, conjunct sun moon and um, sun is male male uh, energy moon is feminine energy the two of them come coming together for a new beginning and um and so and so the you know we we can then look forward to the new projects and with all this flowing energy that we saw um, we will be very very helped by our you know spiritual guides physical um we will find help at the physical level. Um, we we have lots of aid to really make the transition, you know, transmute, um, right. go through this deep transformation that Pluto is asking of us uh, in this time period. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like we're in for some exciting and eventful, but generally probably positive um six weeks here of just a chance to kind of finally let go of stuff maybe we've been working on for a long time and then with the the new moon launch i i kind of see it like been working striving to achieve maybe a job you get hired and then you start at the new moon and it's like a new beginning a new journey moving forward um okay well that's great so any final words before we well, wrap it up um, here it just happens this particular time that the um, the uh, uh, lunar eclipse, uh, uh, hold on, the lunar eclipse is September 17th. So in between the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse, we're going to have the equinox. Oh, right. Yeah. And so that also, you know, adds to, to a shift of energy and, and helping us to move from the old to the new and uh and just really support us in our personal journeys and as a society in our, in our journey as a nation as well in transitioning to a phase where we will find solutions and we will move away from division and more toward unity i'm not saying overnight but right. this is the general energy that's that's there well, present. i noticed that um now. You know, you did you set the chart for Washington D.C. because we're on opposite sides of, of the country right now. I'm in California, and you're in Florida, but the um, there was a lot of stuff in the the top of the chart there. So highlighting, and of course, you know, we have the elections coming up. We're coming into the last final run of that. So things sounds like they should feel different in a month or a so. lot a lot is going to change and keep on changing we are not seeing the end of the story quite yet yeah um, not until probably the end of the year beginning of the new year we will have more clarity but but this lunar eclipse is actually going to be uh, giving us quite a bit of clarity in mm. the fog because neptune pisces can be you know the veil between us and the truth, you know, between us and the reality. And um, it, it brings about fog and confusion. And uh, the lunar eclipse is going to pierce that and 
give us a chance to, a lot of issues are gonna come up to the forefront and we are going to be able to see them much more clearly, which can then lead to better decision-making. And then the new moon, the, the solar eclipse will be, you know, in Libra, it's about balance, remember? Mm -hmm. Uh, reaching a state of balance in order to move forward with more harmony, Venus, you know, and love and and compassion and and just love for one another as a fellow human being. Uh, we all at the end of the day want the same thing. We're just mm -hmm. wanting to go about it in different ways, but mm -hmm. um, you know, the fundamental aspirations are at the very, you know. All humans want to be loved, they want to be seen, they want to be heard. And um, we are moving toward a time of greater freedom as well. I didn't bring it up there because mm -hmm. we didn't talk about Uranus, but Venus rules Libra, but she also rules Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus and it was part of that figure. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we are, we are moving into an era of, that I will call Renaissance. It's, huh. we are really moving to a better era, which will start 2025, 2026, and so on and so forth. And those, those blue lines that you saw, these patterns, flowing patterns are starting to put themselves into, into place and they will stay with us for the next few years. And they will be really helping humanity reach that next level of consciousness. And, um, but for that, People have got to do the Pluto work and the release work of everything that's been holding us in chains. And mm -hmm. most of it are, you know, our traumas and patterns, uh, wounds from the past that we are just needing to look at and acknowledge, validate, and then throw love on there, you know, and, and, and compassion and forgiveness to self first. Because our soul chose, you know, to live these difficult experiences, challenging experiences, in order to reach a point where we would be able to transmute and reach that next, that's that yeah. next stage of evolution. Yeah, you know, I've been seeing that a lot in the readings I've been doing, starting in this this past spring. It's been not a theme in every reading, but it's been a when it comes up, it's potent. It's like, no, you have to deal with this. You do not, the theme has been, you do not want to bring this into 2025. So right. it's we, we must we leave it behind. 2024 yeah. is the end, is the end. And Pluto moves into uh, the next sign, Aquarius, a uh, much lighter air sign, yeah. uh, November 19th. So really before November 19th, we've got right. to do all this cleansing, detoxifying, release, and, and, you know, pruning, just, just opening well, our hearts, opening <laughs> our hearts. You know, it's interesting. What's interesting about that is in the, in the readings I've been doing, it's not like people have to let it go. They could choose to keep it, but the message is you don't want to take this with you. It's going to, right. it's going to hamper you. It's going to kind of make things difficult. Weigh you down. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to weigh you down. It's going to keep you from actually being able to move forward. And so you want to let this go to, to prepare yourself adequately for 2025. That's been the, the kind of message. Yeah, and it is a time of empowerment because yeah. as we're releasing and letting go, we are realizing our full, you know, our full power and, and the full expression of ourselves. We're able to more and more, um, you know, honor ourselves. And a lot of the healing, I mean, the forgiveness needs to be to self as well for having perhaps up until this point chosen to stay in certain patterns, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and just, or we couldn't, we couldn't see it, you know, very, very clearly yet, but now we are, and this eclipse is going to help us see it so clearly that it will be inevitable for us. We will be able to, you know, make the leap and just, let it go, release. And it's really a big time of validation of feminine energy for men and women, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, about peace and harmony and the energy of manifestation as well is feminine energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's end right there. That sounds like a good spot. Do you want to tell people how they can get a hold of you if they'd like oh, to? Oh, yes, of reading? course. Um, so 
Uh, my website is coreawakening.com, but it's all attached, C-O-R awakening.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, they can go on the website and explore. And okay. uh, I'll and put that in my, the show notes. My too. Gmail, I mean, my um, astrology uh, email is coreawakening at gmail.com. Okay. Then I'll, I'll through, through that. Uh, yeah, link. Okay. And I'll put I'll put those below in the show notes. Okay, everyone. Have a great fall. Take care. And we will see you thank soon. You, thank you. Okay.